What's up guys, Johnny here with Team Legit. Today I've got an epic video for you guys today. Uh, we're gonna do a quick unboxing and a build video. And I say epic because it literally is epic. We've got the MB Epic 280 V2 for you guys today. We're gonna do a quick unboxing and we're gonna get into the full build video for you guys. If you guys are out there just picking up one of these things, hopefully this build video helps you guys and you guys know exactly where everything goes. The build's pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and crack right in. All right, so uh, I picked up the ARF model from uh, Multicopter Builders with their standard power setup. The power setup that I got is able to handle 5-cell setup. I probably won't be flying 5-cell at first, but I'll be kicking it in there with the 4-cell. So let's do a quick unboxing and show you what comes inside. All right, guys, as you can see, I've got everything that comes in the ARF kit laid out here on the table for you guys, and I'll go over each one of the components real quick uh, as we begin the build. First thing you'll notice, you'll have the dirty plates. I put those on the left side here. These look very similar. Uh, the way you can determine the difference between the two is the top dirty plate has a hole in it. This is for your ESC wires to come up and over into the uh, um, flight controller area. I went ahead and labeled mine bottom dirty plate, and I've already labeled the other one top dirty plate. One thing that I did do is already do a, a quick pre um, pre fit or a dry fit of these, and I went ahead and marked my motors. There is a uh, specific way that the dirty plate connects to the top plate and as you can see I've went ahead and marked motor 1, 2, 3 and 4 and I put an arrow showing the direction of forward because this clean plate does not fit the other way so you gotta make sure that the forward facing um, dirty plate lines up with the clean plate. Moving along the build as you can see, I've got the four speed controllers here. These are the multi-copter builder ones. These come in the ARF kit. They're 30 amp. They're rated for two to six cell setups. Uh, they do have the BEC built in. For those guys that want to run those really high power setups, uh, you can run the four or five cell with these particular motors. I wouldn't run a six cell. You might burn your motors and reduce the longevity, but uh, they can handle a five cell setup. Included in the kit is the 14 gauge um, positive and negative leads for your battery and these will actually solder up to the PDB board that is also included and we're actually going to wire all this up to this particular power distribution board. Uh, moving across the table we've got 11 uh, long tall standoffs and these will fit across the clean plate and uh, raise the top plate so you got plenty of room to uh, put your electronics and things like that. Uh, we've got the four arms and each arm has two carbon fiber spacers. These spacers are needed to uh, fit the top and bottom of the dirty plates together so you can fit your ESCs under. Also we've got two aluminum standoffs. These will also go in there to add a little bit more support. We've got the four aluminum standoffs. These standoffs will connect the um, dirty plate the dirty section to the clean section and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, they're also coupled with these weird looking standoffs as well here. Next we're going down the uh, nuts and bolts package. You've got 55 M3 bolts here set up ready to go. Um, you've got 12 total nylon locking nuts. Those will lock the arms into place. We've got 12 bolts that will match those nylon locking nuts. Then we've got four, a set of four nylon bolts that will hold the bobbins in place. As you can see, we've got the four bobbins here. These will isolate your dirty plate to your clean plate so you don't get any vibes into your video feed. Uh, continuing down the ARF build, uh, you will get a flight controller. Um, the NACE32 is the one that usually comes with it. I actually opted out of it since I already had plenty of my flight controllers. I'm running the Dragonfly 32s, which is the same hardware, uh, and I'll be running clean flight firmware. Um, going through uh, the rest of the uh, frame, we've got the middle plate or the bottom of the clean plate. This is what's going to house all your FPV gear and also hold your battery. And then we've got the top plate. This is the uh, protecting plate that will protect all your FPV gear and it will also attach to the love seat or the uh, little uh, GoPro or Xiaomi camera which I'll be running. Uh, it will be able to house that here nice and snug. You've got a battery strap for your battery. The set of 60 by 45 HQ props, cool little sticker, and we've got the motors. Uh, getting back to the motors, we've got the MB2208 1800 kV motors. These are actually really nice motors, very beefy. I'm told they can handle a 5 cell setup, so uh, we'll be running them 5 cell once we get proficient on the 4 cell. And each one of the motors comes with the prop adapter that bolts directly onto each one of the motors. So now that we've got everything lined up, a couple things that you're going to need, and I've already got set up for my build. Each one of the builds come with the Dean's connectors. I actually run XT60, so I've got my XT60 connector ready to go here. You're going to need some black electrical tape to uh, isolate some of the electronics from the clean plate, a pair of uh, pliers, 
pair of dikes or wire cutters, and I've got my six-in-one multi-tool here that uh, adapts to all the different Allen sets. So now we've got everything here, let's go ahead and start the build. Okay guys, we're going to do a couple things uh, for pre-build that we're going to get into here in a second. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my motors. Actually what I'll do here is I'll move all of my components here in the middle so I've got some room to work. And what I'm going to do is, as you can see here, I'm going to braid all of my wires. I like to keep a nice clean ship. So if you uh, braid all these wires, uh, they'll help you out later on in this build. What essentially ends up happening is you build your uh, dirty plate here with your speed controller sitting like this and your motors are going to be out here on each one of the arms so you want these to look nice and clean going into the arms what I'm going to do is do a direct solder and we'll get into that here shortly in the build but the next but the next step that I'm going to go ahead and start with is going ahead and braiding my wires now so you guys can braid them if you want to uh, or you can leave them straight and just zip tie them I just find them a little bit cleaner to braid the wires and you only want to braid the wires to about I would say uh, two-thirds the actual length because you're going to clip them a little bit shorter later on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick on all my motors and uh, after that I'm going to go ahead and take my prop adapters here and we're going to go ahead and assemble them and get the motors ready for the build. Then we'll go on to the soldering section where we'll start soldering the ESCs to the PDB and then we'll start setting up our motors individually. Alright guys, as you can see, I've got my motors all braided up, nice and neat here. I've got my prop adapters on there. Quick note about these motors, uh, they come with a uh, grub screw on both sides of the prop adapter, so be sure to be mindful of that. Uh, if you're going to be running the grub screw, then uh, I would run both, but don't over tighten them because you may screw up the threads in here. Uh, it's just a nice touch. Some guys just run the prop adapter directly and they just tighten it down nice and tight onto the motor and prop together. Alright, so now that we've got this done, let's go ahead and start prepping up our plates. So as I stated earlier, uh, you always want to kind of get your orientation of your uh, clean plate and dirty plate set up. So first thing I'm going to do is we're just going to go through and add a, um, a bunch of the little grommets and the standoffs. We're going to add them all to the uh, two plates here so we have that ready to go for when we do start assembling. I'm going to go ahead and start with the bottom plate. You're going to need two of the M3 screws here. I've got my handy dandy 6-in-1 tool kit here. So what we're going to do is since we know that this is the bottom plate, we're going to go ahead and run two screws through the bottom here. And we're going to install our standoffs on the bottom plate. This is going to give it support uh, between the arms between the arm section here and the middle plate and your ESCs are going to actually fit and sandwich up in here. So we'll go ahead and mount these two guys in here. Alright, so we're going to move the bottom plate over here. Now we're going to start prepping up the top plate of our dirty plate. Um, like I said, there is definitely an orientation. I've already went ahead and marked it here. If you set it up correctly, your top plate of the dirty plate should run in the correct orientation with your bottom plate of the clean plate. So to set this up, we're going to need these four little bobbins here. Now the bobbins go on the outermost holes of the two holes that are here on the two plates. You'll notice that there's three holes here, two holes, a hole, two holes, three holes. So we want to make sure the bobbins go on the outermost holes. So you just simply drop the bobbin here and we're going to use the nylon bolts here to hold the bobbins in place. So what this will basically do is isolate any vibrations that you may or may not be getting from your motors. All right, and I just went ahead and tightened this down as tight as possible without stripping these out. I uh, just got them nice and snug so they're nice and secured here now. Next, we're going to take these four shorter standoffs and we're going to go ahead and drop these in right behind each one of the uh, bobbins here. And as you see, they go right here on the innermost holes. So we're going to go ahead and take our M3 bolts. We're going to need four of them here. We're going to drop those in. All right, so now that we've got our dirty plates set up here and prep ready to be uh, assembled, uh, I wanna go ahead and show you guys what I mean about the uh, orientation. Now let's say I had it set up this way. Your top plate will not fit on there. It only goes in in one direction. As you can see, I've got it in there now and it fits nice and snug. Uh, just a quick note, this is where these little caps will go. Uh, if you see these little cap guys here, what these basically do 
is once these are threaded in, I'll just thread one of them in there just to uh, show you guys what I'm talking about. So once you assemble these, as you guys can see, these don't actually tighten down onto the uh, plate. What these are designed for is to uh, avoid the clean plate and the dirty plate being separated in the event of a crash. So if anything ever happens, uh, these could actually come loose, but this will stop it from flying apart. So you don't have to worry about losing your uh, two halves together. So it's a pretty nice little plan. They don't touch the frame at all, so that way your vibration dampening is still isolating your dirty plate from your clean plate. Those are just there to secure the two pieces together. So once you've got this set up here, you've got it marked, you've got your motors marked in the correct orientation. Uh, I'm going to be running the, uh, the Dragonfly 32, so I've got one, two, three, and four set up here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start the assembly for the um, PDB and the ESCs. Now before we go over to the assembly of the PDBs, uh, it's a quick note that these ESCs are heat shrunk together. But it's always a good idea to run a little bit of black electrical tape. And now this is a precaution that I like to take down here in the center here because essentially what's going to be happening is we're going to solder up our PDB right here in the middle and I just want to add a little bit of extra isolation. I am going to be coating my PDB in uh, liquid tape, uh, liquid electrical tape, but I also want to have that extra barrier here just in case I get any vibrations or anything and these parts are rubbing together. I don't want them to touch the carbon fiber. As you guys may know, carbon fiber is conductive. Alright guys, moving on to the uh, assembly of the ESCs to the, to the PDB and installing our motors and things like that. Um, so what we're at right now is I've already went ahead and skipped a few steps. What I've done here is I've already shortened my ESC wires down, the, my positive and negative wires down quite a bit and I've already exposed the heat shrink here because I'm going to actually solder my motors directly to the actual ESCs just to give myself a little bit cleaner setup and a lighter setup as well too. Another thing I've done, as I've mentioned earlier, I've marked my motor direction, uh, my motor positions, one, two, three, and four. What I've also done is went ahead and marked my motor directions, which way they're supposed to spin according to my flight controller. Like I said, I'll be using the NACE 32. So I'm going to be using the uh, motor directions that they recommend. So I went ahead and done that, and this will be used later on in this section. So uh, what first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and solder my PDB, my ESCs to the PDB. I've already gone through and tinned both sides of all the pads on the PDB, so I can go ahead and skip that step. When you go ahead and solder your ESCs down, you want to make sure that uh, you get a nice, good, solid solder. I'm going to be using some flux paste, and what I do is just dip the ends of each one of these ESCs into the paste, and this will help soldering move a lot quicker. All right, so I've got all the uh, ends here pasted up and ready to go. Time to add some solder. Now, um, I've had some flack from people in the past saying that uh, I'm not pronouncing the word solder correctly. Well, I've always grown up and I've always been told it's called solder, S-O-D-E-R, solder. Uh, you don't actually pronounce the L. Um, some of you people in other countries may actually use the L and pronounce the L and say solder. Um, well, in America, we say solder, so I'm going to go ahead and continue saying solder. And if you don't believe me, go to dictionary.com, look up the word, and click the speech part and see what it sounds like. All right, here we go. I've said it once, and uh, I'll definitely say it again. Having a good soldering station and uh, <clears throat> having the skills to solder is very, very important in this hobby. It will save you a lot of time and a lot of money. So I would suggest make sure you guys get yourself a nice soldering station and uh, get the right equipment to solder and you'll be definitely on your way. Having the flux paste allows the solder to just soak right into the wires. Makes it very, very quick and easy. And I am using 6040 rosin here. Uh, I bought a bunch of these when a certain company um, that uh, went out of business, I bought as many as I could. Uh, this is the ones I particularly like to use. But you can get these anywhere. Just look for the 6040 rosin solder. All right, so we've got these all set up. I've got my little PDB here. I've already gone through and tinned all the ends. Uh, basically just added a drop of solder down on there 
and put some uh, little blob on there. This will help move things along a lot faster. So I'm going to go ahead and designate the A side for my uh, positive. So I'll just go ahead and put that down. And as you can see, uh, preheating or pre-tinning all the ends will just make things so much easier for you in the long run. All right guys, as you can see, I've got my PDB and my ESC soldered down to the actual plate and they're in there in a nice, neat fashion. Um, I can tuck them in just a little bit more if I need to, but when I put this top plate on here, I uh, should be able to hide all the ESCs in there nice and neatly. All right, as you guys can see, they fit in there nice and neatly. They're uh, tucked away really well. They're not smashed down or anything. Uh, just held on pretty nice and tight. Um, it's very, very tight fit in there. So once you get your motor arms and your leads and things like that, it's gonna, uh, motors on there and your little spacers, it'll hold on there nice and flush. Here, um, the PDB is touching the bottom plate. Again, this is why we put the black tape down here. We wanna make sure that we try to isolate it as much as possible. It's actually uh, raised off just very, very little bit right there in there uh, because of the wires, but um, I still wanna add that electrical tape just for that safety. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and desolder all of my motor wires. Alright guys, moving on down the build, uh, I've gone ahead and skipped a few steps for, uh, for you guys just for the sake of moving the uh, video along a little bit faster. I've already went ahead and removed all of my ESC wires off of the uh, ESC, the motor wires, because I'm going to solder my motor wires directly to here. Um, now this part is a little bit tricky, you have to make sure that you have a servo tester so you can test each one of the wires since we braided them. If you did not braid your wires and you're running directly to the actual ESCs, you're basically going to run uh, two motors like this and you're going to run two motors with two of the wires switched which what we'll do will uh, flip the rotation of the motor because you want to have two spinning clockwise and two spinning counterclockwise. Another thing that I've already went ahead and uh, moved a little bit past forward is um, I've went ahead and put my battery leads here, my uh, 14 gauge wires and what I did basically is move my battery leads off to the side of the uh, um, mini copter so what happens is my battery lead will come up I can reroute it later as as of now I just left it bare uh, I've also gone ahead and added a positive and a negative here this is going to be my auxiliary this is going to be uh, running my uh, FPV system so uh, whatever I use uh, to power up will be coming from here uh, if I do decide to go with a 4-cell, I have to make sure that my video transmitter and my camera can handle 4-cell, which in my case they can. If I later want to run a 5-cell setup, I'll go ahead and put a BEC in line here to uh, drop that voltage down to the appropriate voltage. I also went ahead and put the uh, black uh, liquid tape. Uh, this is the liquid tape that I have here uh, on the actual PDB because, like I said, this is going to be placed on here. I want to make sure that it's isolated as best as possible. So... Um, Another thing that I've went ahead and done here is um, I've already mounted up my motors to the actual arms. Um, you have to check the arms, make sure that you have the right arms. Uh, they are um, ambidextrous arms, but they need to be rotated in order to fit the uh, dirty plate here. So I went ahead and lined up my arms, uh, two of them in this fashion, two of them in this fashion, which correlate correctly onto the dirty plate here. Uh, one thing to note is the bolts that come with the um, motors are not long enough to fit through the 4mm arms. So um, the MB Epic kit also comes with the bolts long enough. They're the same bolts that we use for all the standoffs. They will work for the motors and they get a nice firm grip on those motors. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, I've put the longer bolts, two of the longer bolts already here uh, on the dirty plate. So I can go ahead and line up my motors and find out exactly where my wires are going to go. So if you see here, I've got two of my uh, bolts that go in there. It's going to come around here. They only go on one way. Two of them go in one way, two of them go in the other way. All right, so I've got that set up here, and uh, my motors are pretty much ready. That's where they're going to go. Let's go ahead and get our electronics in here. And as you can see, it's a nice, tight fit with uh, the arms and everything like that. 
Um, we'll go ahead and move the uh, speed control wires out of the way, the uh, power wires out of the way. You want to make sure that when you do take your uh, top dirty plate that these clamp down nice and neatly on here uh, and then they're not pinching any of the wires or anything like that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just pop this on here real quick. Okay, and I've got two of my M3 bolts just to hold it into place while I measure. So there's that. That's pretty much what it's going to look like when we're done here. These wires are going to tuck through here. So one thing that I'm going to do is I want to, again, go with that nice clean look. So what I'm going to do is um, you can actually run these motors just directly into the ESCs right here and you have that short little wire or you can run them up over the uh, or around the bobbins here there's nothing going to be in here so you've got this room to play with you can run them right into the bobbins and then drop down over the edge right here you just want to make sure you leave enough slack here uh, to get to the actual motor wires so if you look in here I've got my ESCs right there ready to be soldered to so what I'm going to do uh, is take this and just cut this right about there. Just cut all three of them right across. I can clean it up later uh, as I disconnect them. So uh, again, this is gonna go right here and my ESC signal wires are right underneath in there. So when I disconnect this, this can uh, line up directly with that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with all the other ones. Uh, I know that these are gonna go into the ESC right here. So I'm just cutting them just a bit longer here. Make sure you don't clip it too short, but you want to have it uh, nice and nice and flush uh, there for that setup. All right, so uh, now that we've got our wire lengths uh, at the appropriate length, we can go ahead and take this top plate back off. And we're gonna go ahead and solder our motor wires. Then what we're gonna do is test each motor direction as we go to make sure that they're spinning in the right way uh, as the NA32 calls for. So I'm going to go ahead and start soldering all my motor wires down and uh, we'll move on to the next step. So I, what I've got here is a servo tester and all this does is basically give the signals to the uh, whatever input that you would whatever output that you have gives it the signal to uh, go from 0 to 1500 or whatever the range is for that particular device so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug this into the servo tester if you look back at the top plate of a dirty plate I put the motor direction and should be spinning in a clockwise motion so what I could do here is just brace that for a quick second and I'm just going to temporarily plug this into a three cell. Now make sure you plug this in polarity correct. And if you guys haven't had a chance yet, make sure you go through and check the polarity of all your uh, connections. Uh, make sure that nothing is touching or arcing or anything like that. And then we can go ahead and power this up and give it a quick spin. As you see, we've got it powered on. And we've got the command saying that it's armed and ready to go. And a quick test of the uh, motor direction spin tells me that this motor is spinning in the correct clockwise fashion. So I can now go ahead and move on and do the other three motors in the same way. That way I can go ahead and uh, get my setup that all the motors are spinning in the correct fashion. Okay guys, now that we've got everything set up, all of our motors are spinning in the correct motion, and uh, we've got everything pretty much set up now to start the assembly process. Uh, we took all these necessary steps that we just did right now to ensure that we don't have to keep uh, separating this top plate and the bottom plate from each other. We wanna make sure we get it right and we do it right the first time. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and now put everything down. We're gonna lay it all out as if we were going to go ahead and close up the uh, frame, which we're going to go ahead and do. What we'll do is, uh, actually, there's no more soldering uh, at this particular point right now, so we're going to go ahead and move over to the other table so we can get a better idea of where everything is going to go.
Okay guys, so uh, here we are now. We're gonna go ahead and start assembling the uh, top and bottom plates. Um, one thing, remember we already added our grommets and everything there, so we should be uh, pretty much ready to start bolting things together. One thing I'm gonna do real quick before um, I go ahead and close the two plates is, uh, since I did expose the ESCs here uh, at the motor leads, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a piece of black tape over it, just in, as an extra precaution, just to make sure we don't get any additional issues. Okay, so we're gonna take our uh, bottom dirty plate and we're gonna mount up our ESCs in the corresponding uh, fashion. So we're gonna go ahead and lay them out as if they had the flight controller in there. So we've got one, two, three, and four. And as you can see, they could fit on there nice and neat. We've got our motor lead that comes out here on the side and uh, ready to go. All right. We're going to take these four bolts, Multicopter Builders put these together as they stick the bolts in from the bottom and then they put the nuts on top. Um, you could do it either way. I actually prefer to put the bolts through the top and the nuts on the bottom. That's just my personal preference. You guys can choose at home how you guys want to do it. We're going to need these double spacers here. Uh, these line up here and uh, they allow the arms to fit nice and snug with the spacers to give you that room for the ESCs. that all your motor wires and all your leads and everything is coming out nice and neatly. And we can go ahead and start. So what you could do is go ahead and set that up just so you get that nice clean look. This is the tricky part, is trying to get all these components to line up and then be able to bolt up as well too. All right, so we made it through the assembly of the uh, motor and ESC section. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our multi-tool, we're just going to tighten down all of these little bolts, these nylon lock bolts, and then we're going to take two of our M3 bolts and we're going to tighten down the uh, two plates. Uh, it is going to be a tight fit in there with the speed controller and uh, PDB, but just make sure that you're not pinching any wires or anything like that. Uh, that could be catastrophic. We've got that going there. And I'm going to go through and tighten up each one of these bolts. All right, now we're ready to move on to the next step, which is basically assembling the clean plate to the uh, dirty plate. And actually, I think we marked it because that's the direction that we need to spin, so or the direction that we need to go. And as you see here, I've already went ahead and installed all of my standoffs on the top part because once you assemble this part to here to the to the dirty plate, you're not going to be able to get to these threads. So I've already went ahead and installed all of my uh, standoffs just to get a good footing of where we're going to go. Um, next thing you want to do after this point, I'm going to go ahead and actually trim these wires down and I'm going to go ahead and set up my flight controller. Now one really cool thing about the dirty plate and the clean plate section is that you've got plenty of space in here to mount things. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use these nylon standoffs here and actually hang it in here so that way I've got plenty of room to run a large battery. I plan to run a 2600 4 cell for now um, or maybe a 2200 depending on what uh, what uh, balances out better with my camera. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and solder in my pins but I'm going to do everything upside down on my uh, flight controller. That way I can uh, hang it again like I said underneath the clean plate. So then I've, now that I've got those uh, little standoffs in there, the screws seem to stick out a little bit more than I'd like. And you can just take simply take a razor blade and chop the tops off. All right, good deal. So we've got a nice flush finish in there and we've got the uh, spot for the standoff. All right guys, so we've got the dirty plate all set up here. What I've done is uh, gone ahead and trimmed the positive and negative wires off of three of the ASCs. Two, three, and four do not have the positive and negative. So I'm only gonna be running the back off of ESC number one located here. Uh, we've got everything all set up here to uh, attach the clean plate. At this point is where you would add your FPV gear. So if you're gonna be running uh, video transmitters and things like that, you would go ahead and run them uh, according to the positive and negative wire that we created here. And then um, 
You can go ahead and set up your battery terminal as well too. One thing that I've gone ahead and done is I've set up my flight controller here. I'm using the uh, Dragonfly 32 and all I've done here is added the two pins here for the PPM which is just channel one. I'm going to be running a PPM receiver and I'll probably plug that in here and then run it up through and uh, mount it on the top plate here um, or I'll run the wire around whatnot. Uh, we'll figure that out here shortly. Um, so that's just for my signal wire. The only reason there's two pins here is because it's very hard to cut these down any smaller. Uh, if you try to do a one row it uh, just falls apart so I went down to the two pin. On the front here I've got my four motor leads here, my one, two, three, and four motor leads that these will plug into and I've got the um, VBAT and the uh, beeper. Um, I'll probably go ahead and install those later on down the line. So now that this is hanging in here I can actually just go ahead and drop this down directly into place here. I can put my four M3 bolts here to hold the uh, top plate to the um, the, the clean plate to the dirty plate and then we'll put our four little lockers down there so uh, it keeps the two plates together in case of a crash or any uh, you know epic landing or whatnot but uh, overall this is pretty much the uh, conclusion of the build I'm going to go ahead and button everything down for you guys just to show you what it looks like and then I'll go back through later on and add my FPV gear uh, I may do a video for the FPV gear just to uh, have those guys out there that are getting into it just so they can see what I'm running. So I'm going to go ahead and button things down for you guys and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. Alright guys, there you have it. There's the MB Epic V2. Uh, I'm going to be running my Yaomi camera up here on the top and the PZO420. I'm going to go ahead and slap an immersion 600 milliwatt video transmitter in here. I may do a second video for adding all the FPV gear. Um, not sure yet. But uh, I do want to thank you guys for watching. I know this is kind of a long build and a uh, long video. Um, so I want to thank you guys for enduring through it. I want to thank Richard Shelton over at uh, Multicopter Builders for supplying us with the MB Epic V2. Um, this is a really great little quadcopter. It's very durable. I've actually seen it in action and I've seen it take hits. So uh, I'm very excited to get to flying with this thing. If this uh, video helped you, make sure you guys click the like button. If you guys haven't had a chance to subscribe, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We do a lot of builds and a lot of tutorial videos on all different types of products that uh, you guys have. And if you have any suggestions for us, don't forget to leave that in the comments below. I'm Johnny with Team Legit. Thanks for watching, guys. I want to show you guys the new Team Legit FPV pod. All right, so I've had some fun running around on my, my summit here. So I'm going to go ahead and slap the pod right onto my MB Epic 280 V2. So all I'm going to do is just take my power lead, plug it in, 